they can participate in the diagnostics. They right. can participate in the so design. good morning, everyone. I'm Stan Bergman, the, the chairman and CEO of Henry Schein. Delighted to be here this morning with Sohab Suleiman, the president of ASDA, that's the American Student Dental Association. Uh, Suleiman, it's really great to be here with you, uh, Dr. So future Dr. Suleiman. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. And, um, well, I can still call you Sohab until you got the degree. <laughs> Six months, I'm counting. Six months. Then it's doctor. <laughs> then it's doctor. Anyway, um, you know, we are today in what many have called the fourth industrial revolution. Right. The first being, you remember, uh, in the history books when we saw the smoke uh, chimneys in the UK. Then we, the second being uh, when Ford created the uh, Model T on the production line. And the third, when we had PCs, cell phones, but they weren't really talking much to each other, a little bit. And in 2007, when Steve Jobs announced the iPhone, the connection between the telephone, the cell phone, the PC and devices. At that time through the ether but what we now call the cloud. It's an exciting period in dentistry. How do you find yourself viewing the future in dentistry knowing that we're now heading into the fourth industrial revolution? I mean it's incredible. The rate at which technology has is, is advanced has been absolutely mind-boggling. I mean I remember talking to my parents about what they had as kids compared to what we have as kids. I mean what we have now and then can you imagine what my kids will have? I mean it's right. exponential growth. Just dentistry itself. I mean it's almost funny even starting where I'm at in dental school my first year compared to where I am now I've already seen multiple advancements of technology whether it's a certain bonding agents, agents composites, um, CAD CAM, um, all that stuff is just evolving even within that four year period I'm still seeing an increase in that technology so it's phenomenal I mean I, I think definitely with our generation we're very much pro technology we love, we love being on cutting edge we love seeing what's out there so we're, you'll see a lot of us when we graduate we're gonna be very much kind of moving from the old way of dentistry when moving towards the technological age because that's right. what we start with we're not it's not gonna be phased into our education right. it's part of our education so so in that context yeah. what do you want from people like Henry Schein, people like Henry Schein. what can we do to make life more efficient and dentistry more rewarding for these exciting young dentists who are coming out of dental school that's, that's an excellent question. I mean, the biggest thing is really just the education. I mean, we see all this technology, all this stuff happening, the cutting edge, and a lot of times right. we're so focused on, on our book work, on our getting our hand skills down, that the stuff kind of doesn't quite make sense to us yet, but we're so excited about it. So right. it's kind of just, how do we connect those two points, that excitement with what's out there? So, you know, having companies like, like, like Henry Shine come in and, and teach us about the technology, get us kind of with our hands on it first. So when we graduate, it just becomes a natural routine of our dental right. practice. I mean, a lot of, and again, we see with a lot of schools across the nation, um, Certain schools are very technologically apt, right. other schools are still going up that curve. So it's kind of nice if there's some way to level the playing field, have everyone kind of have that same access to that same technology. Well, I don't want to put amazing. too much pressure on you, yeah. but you come from a dental school that's yeah. always been on the cutting edge. Yeah. So I think the fact that you have this platform now as president of ASDA, right. coupled with the fact that you come from a dental school that has always been right on the edge of bringing technology into the profession, uh, it'd be interesting to see yeah. what you do with your life. Yeah, it's, I agree 100%. I mean, I, it's almost interesting to see, like I'm sure in your, your own lifetime too, just seeing kind of what's evolved at that point in time. I mean, I, I'm gonna graduate now with this, uh, with the, the current CAD CAM technology, the current the internal scanning, the digital impressions, all of that, the stuff that we're kind of moving away from the, right. the normal uh, materials of the dental uh, the normal dental lab. Um, what's, what's funny though is that I can't imagine where we're gonna be even within 15 years of my profession. I remember seeing just on Facebook like this, uh, this, this the concept for a lot of the future of dentistry. Right. And this idea of just putting a, a drill inside the patient's mouth and a drill inside the mouth the, the, the dentist handles it almost like a neurosurgeon they're outside the patient's mouth on the side of the laptop just kind of working on the side and the drill is cutting down to the micron level where it's perfect accuracy only the decay is removed I mean that seems like far-fetched but it's not at all I don't think it's that no, far-fetched even all. because yeah. let me tell you where I started out. Yeah. when Jim Brzezlowski our president of Henry Schein and I joined Henry Schein yeah. We moved Henry Schein from the cable machine to the first fax machine wow. 30, 35 years ago. So we were about your age yeah. when we did that. Can you imagine where you're going to be That's true. 35 years from now? Yeah. I don't think I've used a fax machine before. To be you know what a fax machine is? It's what your grandfather had in his office. That's true. That's incredible. Right. So it's very, very exciting. Now, you know, 
<coughs> we, we often, um, on the, 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 the industry side, look at the profession and say, what do dentists really want? Right. And we see the market now, from a professional point of view, bifurcating, or really trifurcating is such a word. We see the very, very large industrialized practices. We see the mid-market practices where dentists are actually entering into programs to own multiple practices. And then we have the smaller practices, two to three practitioners. What, what turns you on? What, as my ski instructor said, what floats your boat? It's kind of interesting when you mention that. I mean, we kind of see a general shift in dentistry towards, uh, and it's almost, if I may, I'm not an economics major, I'll say that right off the bat. But it's almost from what I've experienced, what I've talked to other students, it seems like we're starting to shift away from the small individual owned practice. It seems that we're almost seeing an increase in the larger group practices, we're seeing an increase in DSOs, and a lot of that's driven just from the general environment the student comes out with. I mean, we know the astronomical student debt that currently exists. Yeah. A lot of times when a student graduates, they don't have the means to own that personal private practice. Right. So you'll see them, they get picked up by these larger practices get picked up by these DSOs so someone like me I'll be graduating with quite a few hundred thousand dollars in debt yeah. so to me it, it, that's, that decision becomes much more difficult do I go into private practice and buy a, a practice or do I have this opportunity that will train me pick up my speed and also not to mention have that support constantly while I go through that student debt portion um, and, and that being said, I mean, I could see myself kind of just being in that same boat with all the other students. That I that becomes more of a viable option than what used to be for those that are maybe 10, 20 years ago. When they yeah, graduated. but I still think there's an opportunity for all three highways. I agree, yeah. Because um, so many dentists are entrepreneurs at heart. That's true. Dentistry yeah. is one of those great parts of healthcare where you can provide great healthcare while you're still running a business. Correct. So there is funding available for those that want to create a small mini DSO, a mid-sized practice. Exactly, yeah. A couple of very smart entrepreneurial dentists, they want to really find a way to drive a small practice uh, as dentists. And then there's the very large groups that are professionally run by business people. Correct. Uh, and so I think there's the option of both. Uh, and then the smaller practice can still yeah. exist. And, and I, would, I would like to clarify my comment. There's an area where I feel that smaller practices will always be the, the way it runs, and that's in the rural communities. Yeah. Rural communities, you, you can't have larger practices, you can't have group practices. The small, the small single-owned practice will always be available in rural communities. I think that's, that's something that's there to stay. I come from a very small town, Socorro, New Mexico, population about 13,000. There was two, uh, about three individual dentists, single practice, all doing very well. And that's kind of right. the environment that does sustain that. I think it's funny, coming from Seattle, though, with a larger community, that's where you yeah. start seeing more of the group practices. How do we get more dentists to go back into those small communities? I mean, I think to be honest, a lot of it tends to be debt driven is the reason why people are having difficulty going back. Yeah. I mean, I think really just having more of the loan repayment programs, having more incentives for, for dentists to go back to rural communities. Um, another thing too is a lot of times people, when they have that tie to the community, um, when, they, when they go back to those communities, a lot of times they're kind of, they're welcome. They kind of, you know what I mean? Right. You graduate from a small community, people kind of know you're coming back because they're dentists when you're done. So really, I mean, just having more of that ability to give the students the option. I think what it is, the door is starting to narrow a little bit just from right. that. And I mean, we saw just since 2005, student debt's doubled across the board. I mean, that's that's doubled, and it's not going away. Right. I mean, I, I, I almost scared to even think what it might be in another 10 years. Are we going to see another double and shift now going from 250000 now to an average of 350000 400000 That starts shifting. Well, technology yeah. can help, right? And that is very Because true. there are now several dental programs, uh, various kinds of modules right. for classes that you can take on the internet that are not that the schools right. could introduce on the internet that present alternative right. models to expensive yeah. debt. And that is that is one of the options that I've heard a lot of people saying is cutting out some of the dental school that can be done online, like you said, yeah. through technologies, things like that. Just the clinical the clinical process can also be streamlined more efficiently right. with the technology out there. But what we need to do is have the deans of the major schools be driving that, and that because they have the credibility. Yeah. I, I would agree, yes, and the, they do. The, the other area that I, I thought we should talk about is the notion that there is a direct correlation between good oral care and health care in general. So we know now, in the last decade, 15 years, maybe 13 years, 14 years, there have been a lot of studies showing that people that take care of their teeth tend to have a better quality life, whether it's obstetrics, whether it's in the cardiology field, diabetes, etc. Is that something that you feel 
Yeah. You can drive through Asda? I mean, I think it's something that would be, I mean, like you said, the mouth is part of the body. I think the, the ideology out there tends to be that the mouth is its own thing, right. then it's their own thing. But I mean, there's a reason why it says doctor in front of our name. I mean, that's because the idea had is you have to know the entire body. And you said studies have shown whether it's periodontal related to cardiovascular, right. uh, the issues are out there. And even outside of just that, we see with normal socioeconomic factors that are involved with the entire body and the mouth. Yeah. And you're absolutely correct. I mean, to understand the mouth, you have to understand the body. And I would say definitely, and currently as we advocate for all things that are dental student related. And I think definitely when it comes to even just the educational aspect, we push a lot of CE courses. When you come to our, our conferences, you'll see a lot of the courses are based right. on some of the science behind dentistry and kind of connecting that oral, right. oral uh, to, the, to the body uh, connection. And I think ultimately in the end, I mean, and I tell this to all my, my, my classmates out there, not only at UW, but also the rest of the schools, I'm, just because it's something that may not be directly related to the mouth doesn't mean that you shouldn't really focus on it when it's class, whether it's pathology, microbiology. I mean, know it because when your patient comes to the door, that little right. lesion that you might see in the mouth that you think is part of just right. maybe a normal ab dental abscess could be something much larger. And if you don't have the ability to catch that, and a lot of times we're the first time to first Well, first dentists, event, yeah. firstly, are amongst the most trusted of all healthcare professions, if not the top, yeah. number one. And many, many patients go to on more dental visits and they go on exactly. medical visits. So exactly. I've always thought that it would be very important to encourage dentists to become more involved in healthcare in general and the studies are there showing it's important. I agree 100%. It's a very, very, very valid point and especially because like I said the lesion you see if you don't understand where it's coming from you'll often miss it right. and like you said the, the, a lot of people see their dentist more than they see their doctor so if the dentist is unable to catch it that may go undiagnosed for years right. and we've heard the horror stories that have been out there so yes. just the ability to focus and catch that I mean right. would be an excellent point yeah. And, and so one area I also wanted to discuss with you, having a, a young, enthusiastic <laughs> uh, president of ASDA sitting yeah. right in front of me, I'm not going to lose this opportunity. <laughs> we at Henry Schein have always believed in the notion of an enlightened self-interest, okay. the concept that Benjamin Franklin coined 200 years ago, where you can do well as a business by doing good. Right. And dentists are ideally positioned right. to get involved in their community, do good in their community, develop their brand, and so, at the same time, draw more patients and conduct better uh, dental care in their practice because they have the income from all the patients to afford the best technology. I, I think you hit a very, very solid point there. And to be honest, I think I remember reading somewhere that dentists were some of the most philanthropic of the yes. professionals out there because not only do we have the monetary means to be philanthropic, right. we also have a skill set that can very easily be applied to a lot of communities. Correct. A dentist can go out, often sometimes easier than a medical doctor, to go out to a community and just pretty much, we have the dental mobile vans, we have the, yes, yes. the, the, the units that can go out there and do that. And I mean, just. A lot of people see their dentists, again, when the rural communities especially, you tend to be a figurehead in the community. You see a lot of them on, on their, their, uh, their um, town boards, you see a lot of them on the councils, um, um, involved in politics, and because they have that ability to be there. And, and, and that's one of the platforms we can really use to drive oral health care because a lot of times, and we're, we're very much on prevention as, as dentists, right. the problem is that sometimes we get stuck on the opposite side where things have already happened. We have a patient come in and they have to get their teeth extracted, have to get a denture, and it's like, what can we do to be on the front end of that, to keep them from doing that? It's all about prevention. And using those platforms, being involved in the community, right. being out in the, 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 through the philanthropic uh, uh, positions they can be part of, I mean, that's how you're able to get involved in that at step one, instead of waiting until the very end and then treating it. I, I've always believed that the way to make a difference is to actually go out in the community, and we know that so much of healthcare expenditure is directly tied into the non-communicable diseases, and one day I'm hoping that you will fight to have the United Nations recognize oral care as the fifth a non-communicable disease that the United Nations recognizes. I would, I would love to be part of that. Counting on you to do that. <laughs> I would love to be part of that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, any last minute thoughts? Any thoughts? What can, I, what can we at Henry Schein do to make life easier for young yeah. as the dentist? I, I think, to be honest, the last minute thoughts is just this technological revolution is just so exciting. As a, as a student, seeing what's out there, the possibilities. I mean, I remember we, we get only, only a little bit of a dose of it through ASDA. Right. We go through our vendor fairs. We don't see a lot of the technology that's out there. We would love to have opportunities like Henry Schein, any of the larger companies to come in to our vendor fairs and show us more of what's out there. Let us get our hands on it and touch it and feel it. Because a lot of times we'll go as a dentist, we graduate, and it's kind of like a kid in a candy store. You're just walking around looking around like oh my god what is all this it's like if we can get a chance to get our hands on that see it before I mean a lot of, that gives us not it doesn't just give us an opportunity to have that in our practice but to understand what's actually out there and how it works because ultimately our, penit our patients are the ones that benefit less exactly. than us they're the ones that get what's on the cutting edge and we know cutting edge means less time in the chair less time feeling any pain and and, and, and just in general a better lifestyle so can yeah. you become a dentist in New York City? I'll be your patient. <laughs> I wish I'll work on the licensure. <laughs> I wish you, if you can make it happen I'll be here. So, so, so good, good luck 
Vegas with the future. Yeah. And uh, we're counting on <laughs> Soheb Suleiman, yeah. Dr. Soheb Suleiman, <laughs> being a leader in dentistry and maybe outside dentistry, even potentially in politics. Who knows, one day. Good. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you so much. much. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. And she's yeah. expand this